Hi and welcome back. I've decided to uh, just finalise the instrument panel uh, cutouts into the actual aluminium part of the panel itself. Uh, and when I bring the camera over here, you'll see I've just laid down the two white pieces of uh, two scale drawn um, uh, side pieces. What am I going to call them? Uh, parts of the parts of the instrument panel that are going to be made uh, from a, the place in Melbourne. You may remember a couple of videos back that uh, I spoke about having these made up. So I've just taped them in spot. I'm going to uh, transfer the center line holes to drill through the backs of the panel. Uh, so there, it's all done. So when the new panels go on, I simply lay it over top, work out how I'm going to fix them in spot, uh, yet to be decided, uh, and that's it. So I just do a little bit of a zoom in so you can see the wiring. Sorry, see the um, the wording of everything and how it's going to go, and I'll, I'll quietly explain it. Okay, starting off on the right hand side. So basically, these pieces of paper I've drawn to scale. So the wording that you see on here, the on and the avionics master, are all done to scale. This uh, drawing file will be sent off to the guy in Melbourne. He will then use this to put into his uh, laser cutting and CNC or whatever he does machine and either cut these at one mil or 1.5 millimeter uh, a mat or a black uh, a, a very mat perspex is what I'm, I'm the finish that I'm trying to get. Uh, these plates will then sit on top of the aluminium part of the panel uh, and these holes will be already cut into the perspex and in the aluminium. So then the V16 radio will pass through, the 12 volt display will pass through and any of these toggles will pass through including the toggle guards. So what I'm relying on at this stage to hold this white thing and assuming that's the perspex against the instrument panel in its correct location will be one, two, three, four toggles, uh, sorry, uh, one, two, three, four uh, plate nuts that'll be inserted into the aluminium and then face fixed through the V16 radio uh, that will hold all that in spot. Plus there's a rather large uh, washer on the, on like a screwed type of washer on the back of the 12 volt display which will hold the whole lot together. I don't have to rely on each of the toggle guards, uh, toggles to do it or the toggle guards. I'll just make the holes oversized in the aluminium aluminium so working from left to right is we've got avionics master uh, nav strobe landing light i'm yet to work out how i'll integrate the uh toggle uh, sorry the um uh, uh wigwag accessories i've got here and autopilot master the accessories is only for this just in case something goes wrong electronically i can isolate things as i will moving across to the left side <coughs> excuse me we've got an on off uh, key on switch. I've got primary ignition, secondary ignition, IFS uh, displays, and push to start. Flap, three odd staging, I'm guessing, and the turbo auxiliary fan on, off, and auto. And of course, your trim tab wheel, trim wheel trim wheel. So again, these holes can be oversized. How I rely this perspex to be face fixed to here and, and not move, I've got those two screws that go into the back of the uh, trim wheel and I've got that and that both with oversized washers on the back of it to hold it against the aluminium. So therefore these can then be oversized and all put in situ prior to putting this in. The turbo fan, auxiliary fan, and the flap controllers are just pushed in. Uh, they're just a, a, a Nava switch. Hopefully all that makes sense. So I'll get on and cut these out now and I'll come back to you shortly. Welcome back. Just a little bit of an update on where I'm at with the instrument panel at the moment. Um, and I've been toying with the idea about, you may recall three or four videos ago about having something central to the instrument panel, in addition to the to the instrument panel if you will, which was going to house some eyeball vents that I got from uh, Aircraft Spruce, the heated seat toggles, and something else. Now I'll let you know what that something else was going to be, which now is, in a minute, and I'll just tell you the reasons why. Because I've installed the Peter Anson engineering canopy latch, which I'm 
very happy with by the way. Uh, it just adds another dimension to the aeroplane. I've then realised that I could not put in the throttle quadrants supplied by AeroV. You know, there's a whole bunch of different things that I could probably do. I could follow down the path of what uh, Gavin was doing, which I think is absolutely brilliant, a bit, bit of engineering, or I can move away from that completely. Uh, and I thought, well, me being me, I'm going to move away from that completely and utilize the existing location for the mixture control on this side for the throttle and move the throttle to the center inside the little device that I was going to make for the eyeball vents, the heated seats and the mixture control. I didn't like the, the sample that I made so I ended up making something smaller and I'll just get onto that in a second. So just moving away from the uh, eyeball vents. I'm going to go back to these original ones that Peter Anson Engineering uh, it give, gave me originally, or didn't give me, I bought them. Uh, I asked for these ones uh, only because they didn't have any styles of the round, I think they call it a scat hose that goes on to this, of which, just digressing, Peter is actually working on a similar vent to this with a scat hose on it, a scat hose attachment for eyeball vents. I was starting to go down the path of these eyeball vents and I just didn't like the ones I got from Aircraft Spruce so I've moved away from it. They cost me $35 and the reason I bought the $35 ones was I thought if I don't like them it's not that much of a loss of money. But just to see what they looked, as, looked like aesthetically. And I think I was just trying to make the instrument cluster too busy. Uh, although in the one week wonder Sonics managed to get two eyeball vents in the actual display, uh, how they did it, I don't know. But anyway, I've moved away from that, so I'm going to go back to these. So, going back to this, what I've made. Now, I've come up with this little idea. This is a bit the structural element of it, which will go behind the panel like that. Now, I'm relying on the actual mixture control to, to fix this in, as well as a couple of little tiny um, rivets that will go into the underside of the fuselage so it'll sit into here. Now you might very well ask why I've done this um, and I thought about making something different rather than just, well two reasons. I couldn't work out how to make this out of one piece of aluminium so you didn't see folded edges or make it out of uh, seeing, uh, some sort of uh, fiberglass or something like that. So I thought I would just make it, this took me probably an hour and a half to make and I'm more than happy with it. Why? Because, just to digress, on the top of the glare shield there's a little rubber strip that goes around and I'll just grab it for you. This is the rubber strip that goes around the top of the glare shield. Now it's um, available off eBay. This I think this cost me about $15 or something like that. Originally I bought the smaller one which is almost half the size. And it looked terrible. So this actually goes around the top of the glare shield like that to give you a, you know, a non-cut area or a, a bump guard or some description. So with the one that I'm not using, this actually works perfect by putting it onto here. Uh, it's just a, a smaller version of the top. To me it looks like it's meant to be there. Uh, by the time I spray this black, it's an, it's an easy way of uh, making it look like it's moulded out of one piece of aluminium. Now, I'm also putting inside this to the heated seat toggles that come directly from Sonics. Now I won't push this in yet because I will never get it back out and I want to spray yet. So basically it just looks like that. It's just a small toggle uh, giving you uh, that without, he says this without glasses on, low, off and high. 
did you see that? So this is backlit. I think it's a beautiful little switch. Mixture controllers in here, out the way, all good. So look, just on the mixture control, some might say that um, you're a fool for moving your mixture away from uh, your throttle quadrants. You just got to go back and look at an old Douglas DC3, they're everywhere. Uh, it's not an excuse, uh, it's what I'm choosing to do. It's something that's not often touched in an aeroplane. Um, well, don't quote me on that. What I mean by that is that it's generally fully rich uh, and leaned at altitude or leaning it for fuel economy and the like. Um, you know, some people fly aeroplanes fully rich all the time. Well, you're going to be going through the fuel if you do. So, it's it's okay. It's out the way. I think it's going to work fine. So, how about I paint this? Um, you can all have a second opinion when you see it in the aeroplane because I think it's going to look really good. Come back and shortly. Hey, yeah, welcome back. Okay, I've just uh, installed temporarily the instrument panel back into the... Um, cockpit of the aeroplane uh, I, I literally couldn't help myself and uh, decided to put in you know 85 or 90 percent of the instruments that go into it just to uh, give an appreciation of how it looks against the black so uh, just before I spin the camera around uh, there'll be a couple of small very small changes or one small change that I'll be making and that's with the two Nava switches that's the turbo uh, auxiliary fan and the flap control I'm just going to slightly pull those apart, maybe by around about uh, maybe uh, maybe five mil, uh, five to seven mil. I know that doesn't sound a lot, but um, when you when I spin the camera around, you'll just see how close they are. It probably is not going to be anything detrimental, but uh, just be aware that that may happen when I do it. So I'll just uh, stop this now, and we'll turn the camera and have a look. Okay, there it is. Uh, so these two switches here, I'm probably just going to pull apart a little bit. I have enough room hopefully going north and uh, coming down south a little bit on that so just maybe make those about uh, five maybe five to seven mil wider just there there's enough room in this distance in the holes that I've already got cut uh, it's just the wording the lettering that will make a difference but look I think it looks okay there's the uh, retrofitted panel below I've just temporarily temporarily put the heated seat uh, toggles in uh, there's a mixture control that goes on here it is uh, away from the control stick I think it's uh, good so um, just looking on this side I think it looks pretty good and we'll just shoot over to the other side okay I think uh, this has worked out really well I'm happy with it anyway so toggle guards worked out fine here's the little uh, USB and USB-C uh, device for charging has a little LCD display on there, not that it's required because it comes back on the IFS displays anyway. V16 radio looks great, I think, anyway. Okay, I think I've uh, reached a point where I can commit to putting the glare shielding for the very last time. I've had it in and out, as probably most other Sonics builders, six, seven times now, and um, I'm going to commit to it today. I, I keep thinking I'm, I'm probably too early, but um, I don't know. I'm just going to commit to it. So, riveted to the underside of the long runs. Done. Two tank straps uh, bolted off and torqued up. I've got two AN5 and one AN6 to go either side, which then tie this um, splice plate, uh, long run splice plate, to the firewall and the firewall sides uh, to be done. I'm going to do it outside of the aeroplane, or outside of the, in situ, sitting it up like this at the moment, so it's easy to get to these three bolts. The two MS screws that go into the firewall are going to be an absolute pain in the ass job to do, but it's got to be done. And then the, M the uh, MS, uh, sorry, the um, AN525 bolts around the sides can then go on. This can then, I can then rivet off and finally commit to all of the sides of the um, long rons, both sides. I have uh, sprayed this uh, satin black, um, which I've done both sides. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I've also sprayed a satin black to the underside of the, the little lip that goes past the instrument uh, 
panel on the um, glare shield. There's a small section, 20, 30 mil, that I've sprayed uh, satin black as well. Uh, other than that, I think it's uh, I think it's ready to uh, start to finally put it in spot. So I'll get uh, started on that now, and I'll come back to you shortly. Okay, just a quick wrap up on everything that's been done over the uh, past couple of weeks. I've just re now put in the instrument panel uh, in through the glare shield to see uh, how it looks. I'm happy with it. it seems to fit um, fairly consistent through there. Um, just on the front of the instrument panel, I've just today, well, I just brought home a another printout of this instrument panel, how I'm going to raise these two Narva switches up a little bit. Um, the whole idea of doing temporary things like this is that uh, if you take for granted you got it right the first time, forget about it. You'll be replacing the dash maybe 10, 20 times. I did make another mistake when I've repositioned these apart. I've now bought uh, it too far down this way. The, so the turbo auxiliary switch is now too low. The start switch now interferes with the wording. So I will now drop the uh, tur uh, sorry the start switch lower. Problem solved. I'll probably bring this top switch down just a little bit. I just think it's too close to the top of that uh, panel at the top. Look, it's it's fairly close. I can work with that. At least I've got it all in and worded. I'm happy with it. So just on the uh, glare shield, it's now fully uh, riveted through to the upper long rons. Both tank straps are in and torqued up, as I said back in a past video. These AN bolts at the front are three either side, the fives and sixes, AN, AN fives and AN sixes, I think they are, six, five A, six A, whatever they are, are all in and torqued up. And also the MS screws at the front, uh, the two MS screws, well actually three MS screws, I think they were through there, can't remember, but that is now all fully torqued up. They were an absolute pain in the ass to, uh, to put in. So I have also committed to the hole on the top of the fuel tank to put in the sender and also drilled the hole for the um, vent line. So I'll just move the camera around the front one. And here's a shot down, looking down on top, a uh, fuel vent here. So the fuel vent line will sort of travel down in this direction and drill through there somewhere, or probably about there actually, because there's a, a small gap through there. It'll go down through there. Uh, fuel sender is sitting in that position uh, just put a pack around the outside of it so as the tank grows it'll slip up through there nice and neat without getting caught whatever not that it will get caught but I'm I'm anticipating it's actually this the fuel sender is actually above the glare shield at the moment uh, so it's it's only going to get closer above the glare shield once the tank has expanded if you look through here you know, that's sort of touching there, and you can see how it sort of goes in a concave or convex, whatever, depending on which way you look at it, back to nothing. So I'm, I'm anticipating that coming down uh, on its expansion process. Uh, underneath the tank straps, you can have a bit of a see of the tank straps underneath there. Uh, and so I'm kind of hoping that's going to expand enough. There's still a fair amount of uh, straps to be tight. A fair amount, of, you can just, hopefully you can just see those. The tank uh, strap bolts are in. Hopefully that uh, is enough there that you can see. So um, it is what it is. And just quickly wrapping up, uh, just quick um, thanks to everyone if you're still watching this far and um, you know, whether you think I'm an idiot or, uh, or good entertainment, it's uh, I thankful both ways, I guess. So at least you're getting a laugh out of it. Uh, just on that, I'm going to be building a 7 metre by 7 metre shed up near the front of the house. Um, this is only 6 metres by 6 metres, but it's just too, it's too squishy. I've got, I've got benches everywhere and it's, you know, everything everywhere. And I think it's just a bit hard to, uh, I'm losing spots to put my motorbikes and, uh, cars and god knows what so um right on and the like uh, so yes the shed's going to be built i think that's around about um in imperial 22 or 23 feet uh square 
uh, sorry, 22 by 22 feet, 23 feet, whatever around, which is what's that, about 529 or something square feet, or 49 square meters, or 50 square meters roughly. So I'm very thankful that I can do that on this block, and as I progress to uh, start um, getting ready to build that, as a bit of a process to go through for council approval and that, uh, the shed is ordered. It should be here in about two to three weeks, let's call it that. By the time I do the next posting, I should have it here. I might uh, do some videos up there and show you the progress of the shed as I proceed with it. Um, hopefully inside of about three months, uh, things crossed, uh, this aeroplane will be moving to its new home. Uh, what can I say? Talk with you all soon.